Have you ever wondered why the news plays the same five stories again and again? Let me give you a little hint. Brainwashing and repetition is the most basic form of brainwashing. Join me as we look at the news cycle and talk about why the mainstream media is so gutless and afraid to report the truth. What's up? Welcome to Troubled Minds News. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and this is the show where the conspiracy is the news. Yeah, that's right. You know exactly what that means. Propaganda, misinformation, disinformation, flat out lies and spin. And well, hmm, sometimes you got to just do the damn thing yourself because uh, all the powers that be won't just tell you the truth. All the fact checks that are bullshit. You know, you know who I'm talking about. You know, exact Snopes. Get out, Snopes. Get the hell out of here. This is all garbage, right? It's all political drivel. And and uh, it's unfortunate because there's actual news that's going on out there. And uh, that's just the way I see it. And if I'm wrong, well, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. So I am unafraid of that. But whatever, right? It doesn't really matter. What matters is we've got today. What's going on, guys? Again, I'm Michael Strange, Troubled Minds News. This show started actually as a as a uh, a piece of the old show, the Troubled Minds radio show, which uh, is pretty good, uh, I got to say. But uh, the thing is, right, we used to do a news segment on uh, Troubled Minds radio when it got, just got bigger and bigger, uh, more unwieldy. People would tune in to listen to, I don't know, what uh, something about the universe or the moon or something, and they get like a, a news segment that just got longer and longer. And, you know, the longer that podcast stayed up there, uh, well, it got more and more dated because of the news. So it made sense to just kind of peel the news off to be its own thing and then uh, just, to, uh, just do a news show and then do like uh, topical shows like we do on Troubled Minds. So there you go. That's how this came to be, and uh, I just discussed with the news itself and here we are as you know uh what i love to do as part of all of this is a uh, uh transparency I, I love the transparency bit regarding uh uh let's see uh da, 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 da. okay hold on i got a text message from uh, all right okay anyway so uh so that's the deal right that, this 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 is a good thing this is all a good thing this is let's get together and talk uh, transparency i share all my links when i'm talking about them and you can find them in the description down below you can always find these uh, uh attached to the podcast of course and and uh, I, I encourage you to follow up and read the articles yourselves because, you know, like I, in some cases, I just kind of skim over them and just, you know, talk about the idea real fast. But uh, there's a lot of good information that doesn't get re- covered, really. So uh, I think it's important that uh, y- you f- find the information if you want to find it easily and not have to go dig it up and, you know, try and find out what the hell I was doing. So that's part of the one part of the transparency process that uh, I'll, I'll always share my sources. Uh, number two uh, is that uh, you can call me. Hey, you can, like I always say, you can can't interrupt a breathless propagandist, but you can't interrupt me because I don't really care. Uh, just don't uh, just read the room when I'm pissed off. Don't call and talk about what I don't want to talk about. And it rarely happens, but that was just the one time last time. So uh, that I will apologize for because I was just a little agitated talking about kids getting shot and stuff. So uh, there you go. But uh, anyway, uh, there you go. That's that. Uh, I'm not like that often, but uh, it just kind of got to me that particular day. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And we'll put you on the show. It's as easy as that. Let's see. Hold on. da 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 uh, check this out. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Yep. No problem. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Handled. Business handled. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, do exactly that. And, uh, or you can join the Discord as well. Uh, TroubledMinds.org. Click the Discord link and we'll put you on the show that way as well. All right. Let's do it. Let's shut up, Mike. Read the news. All right. Let's do it. Here we go. We'll begin here. This one is fizz.org. One of my favorites. Ah, uh, yes. 
Did NASA find hell? Mm, dun, dun, dun. Scientists brace for first glimpse of world that constantly burns. Oh, shit. Did we find the nine hells? What is this? Holy shit. Okay. All right. Uh, mankind's first look at conditions on a super earth 50 light years away is expected in coming weeks via the James Webb telescope. And NASA is bracing to see the stuff of nightmares. Ha! The planet called 55 Cancri E. Is that Cancri? Can- C-A-N-C-R-I. However the hell you say that. Cancri E? Cancri? I don't know. Both sound terrible. Uh, Orbits so close to its sun-like star that surface conditions could literally be like the hell of biblical description. A dimension in a constant state of burning. Data show that 55 Cantry E is less than 1.5 million miles from its star, 125th the distance super hot Mercury is from our sun. Quote, with surface temperatures far above the melting point of typical rock-forming minerals, the day side of the planet is thought to be covered in oceans of lava, NASA reported last week. Imagine if Earth were much, much closer to the sun, so close that an entire year lasts only a few hours, so close that gravity has locked one hemisphere in permanent searing daylight and the other in endless darkness, so close that the oceans boil away, rocks begin to melt, and the clouds rain lava. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Did uh, double, triple hell yeah. Looks like, uh, hey, did uh, NASA inadvertently find the nine hells or at least maybe the gate to it? Think about that. That's pretty terrifying. Uh, one side, boiling lava oceans and the other side, locked in eternal darkness. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Cool. All right, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, getting a word from Ryan Gable for those interested. He wanted to do commercial free tonight. Uh, just totally open conversation and maybe even go an extra hour. So there you go. That's what's happening with that as of this moment. And uh, we'll see. We're going to test after this show and make sure everything's tight for tonight, ready to go. And uh, there you go for anybody that's interested. But uh, I do like the hell world. Hell world. Did NASA find hell? Hmm. I don't know. Is this, is it? Think about that. Imagine if somewhere in the universe there was actually a planet that was a portal to the dimension of hell itself, right? I mean, this seems like as good a canon as any, right? I mean, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 I'm talking here. 702-957-1037. Let's keep on trucking. Let's go to NPR, the most popular source in propaganda. But, uh, well, because it's state-sponsored. Sorry, I didn't, didn't drop my Hell Link article. Here you go. That's pretty hot. Uh, you know what I mean, the Hell Planet. That's pretty hot. Uh, let's go to this. K-N-P-R, uh, NPR. Monkeypox, yes, can look different than what doctors thought. Here's what they're learning. Ah, shit. Come on now. (sighs) June 3rd. For the first time in history, the world is facing an international outbreak of monkeypox. Doctors have detected nearly 800 cases across the globe, from Argentina to the United Arab Emirates. The UK and Portugal have detected the most cases, with about 200 and 100 cases in each country, respectively. The US has recorded 21 cases, and Canada has 58. Such a broad geographic spread suggests, quote, widespread human-to-human transmission is currently underway. Mm. Uh, That sounds lovely. Uh, Said Dr. Maria von Kirchhove with the World Health Organization on Thursday. Are you sick of the the WHO, the World Health Organization? GTFO, these guys. Jeez. Uh, This transmission has likely been ongoing for several weeks, if not months, she noted. Yeah, no shit. Come on. This is is what... Never mind. Two studies published Thursday demonstrate the virus is spreading undetected in some communities of Portugal and the UK. There you go. My Portuguese and UK friends, be very careful because monkeypox... Is on the is, is on the loose. The, the, the moose is loose. Uh, it says because by and large the cases are not linked to each other or linked to a common place or activity. So health officials don't know where people are catching it. In many cases, aren't being diagnosed. The scientists conclude. Oh well, that's nice. Here in the U.S., officials don't know where one of a, one of the cases caught monkeypox. Quote: There could be community level transmission that is happening, and that's why we really want to increase our surveillance efforts. Oh, Jennifer McQuiston, who's deputy director of the Division of High Consequence Pathogen 
pathogens and pathology at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said Friday. That's a mouthful. Quote, I want to emphasize that this could be happening in other parts of the United States. End quote. Okay, this gap in detection may be because the symptoms of monkey, monkey pox in this outbreak can be much more subtle than in other cases. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Come on now. What is this? What? Seriously? Come on, guys. Why? This is why we can't have nice things. What's up, Real Brene Sauce? Says it's in, it's in the juice. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. This is um, this is irritating. It's like, come on, really, stop. <sighs> like I said, uh, if you got a uh, a regular regular thing going on, and uh, the regular thing develops some things, refrain from getting after the thing. If you know what I'm saying, ah, uh, that's that's the best medical advice I've got. I'm not a doctor. You should actually uh, before you change your diet, you should consult your doctor. <laughs> 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link, troubleminds.org. Yeah, same call in number, Matt. Uh, let's go to this, uh, the Stargazers. Yeah, science.org. This is uh, kind of what we were talking about last night. Uh, the historic Maya oriented their lives by the heavens. Today, their descendants and Western scholars team up to understand their sophisticated astronomy. We were talking about this last night, right? The old, uh, um, this thing here, the, uh, you know, you look at the sky, the night sky in the wilderness. Remember Jennifer called talking about getting away from cities and actually looking up at the Milky Way. You can see it. Um, yeah. Imagine when the ancients actually uh, were able to to be able to, you know, just see this wherever they were. What's up? Uh, Alien Nichan. How are you? It's been a while. Where you been? Where you been? Hope everything's good. Hope everything's good with you. What's going on? That's uh, that's my good friend uh, Chantel in uh, in uh, Ohio, I believe it is. What's up? What's going on, guys? How, how's everybody doing? Let's go. Let's go with this. Uh, we got Guatemala. As the sun climbs over a hillside ceremony, oh boy, Ixquic Pose Salanic invokes a day in the sacred calendar. Tz T dash Z I. Uh, uh, I don't know what that is. Anyway, a day for seeking justice. Before she passes the microphone to the next speaker, she counts to 13 in Quiche, a indigenous Maya language with more than 1 million present day speakers in Guatemala's central highlands. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're talking about as recently as 1990s. Uh, everything we did today would have been called witchcraft, says fellow daykeeper Roberto Paz Perez, Paul Salonic's father, uh, after the day, the day count concludes and everyone has enjoyed a lunch of tamales, right? Ritual stargazing, right? Uh, but in any case, this is pretty cool. The, two, the 260 day calendar is still sp- uh, is a still spinning engine within what was once a much larger machine of Maya knowledge, a vast corpus of written quantitative indigenous science that broke down the natural world and human existence into interlocking gear-like cycles of days. In its service, many uh, Maya astronomers, I said many, it's Maya astronomers, described the movements of the sun, moon, and planets with world-leading precision. For example, tracking the waxing and waning of the moon to the half minute in any case uh what we were talking about last night it's pretty cool that uh you know some of these ancient civilizations were able to just lock the hell into this and uh be able to uh, determine exactly what was going on and i think this is good this is a good thing i mean it's a Let's say inspiring in that, uh, you know, without uh, modern instruments and equipment, uh, you can just, uh, you know, get after it. You can uh, do make sketch pads of things and follow chart the stars yourself and, you know, make predictions based on uh, the past and then into the future. It's pretty good stuff. It's pretty good stuff. What's going on, guys? It's not in the maybe juice. Absolutely. What's up, Kenjira? Get ready for more lockdowns and mail-in ballots just before the midterms, folks. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh uh, uh, all right, uh, let's keep on trucking, shall we? SciTech Daily. SciTech Daily. Let's get off the stars. Let's talk about this. Researchers find that a certain protein is related to developing depression. Now, remember the old uh, the CRISPR uh, conversation that happened not too long ago? Yeah, remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, what if they can just uh, CRISPR this out of you? Hey, end of, de- end of depression, right? Yeah. There you go. Anyway, here you go. Researchers from Garona Biomedical Research Institute and Pompeii Fabra in- uh, University in Barcelona, Spain, have discovered the role of an amino acid in depression in humans, mice, and flies. It is proline. 
proline? Pro, I don't know what that is. It is proline, proline, I guess. An amino acid found in a broad range of foods such as gelatin, grass-fed beef, and wild-caught fish. The findings published in the scientific journal Cell Metabolism also link a pro, proline-rich diet to an increased risk of developing depression. So when you know I'm not a scientist when I can't even say basic words properly. Uh, anyway, Dr. Jose Manuel Fernandez Real and Dr. Jordan Maynaris a Per, how do you say that? Perzax, I guess. From, from Okay, anyway, blah, blah, blah. All these people with these huge titles, they said all this stuff. Uh, to reach these conclusions, on the one hand, the type and amount of amino acids in the diet of the participants were analyzed. Participants also completed a questionnaire to measure their depressive mood. Quote, we were surprised that what was most associated with depression evaluated through this questionnaire was the consumption of proline, says Dr. Fernandez Real of the IDIBGI and also head of the endocrinology section at hospital, Dr. Josef Trueta in oh, like so many people and so many titles, ha! Ah, confirming this when plasma metabolomics metabol, I guess, that, well, anyway, uh, when that stuff was evaluated, the concentration of proline emerged as one of the metabolites most associated with indicators of depression. Oh, all right. Uh, but not everyone who had a high intake of proline was more depressed. Oh, the correlation causation? Hmm, interesting. When studying these people's intestinal microbiota, a, a relationship was also observed between depression and bacteria, as well as between depression and bacterial genes associated with proline metabolism. Uh-oh. Thus, it was observed that circulating proline levels depended on the microbiota. Hmm. All right. Anyway, uh, I thought this was pretty interesting, the uh, the protein depressions, but, you know, it's not in everybody. So, eh, real, not real. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, wow. Twitch locked me out of the chat. Not verified anymore. Oh, good. Good going, Rohan. <laughs> good going, Rohan. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know about that. I don't know. Is anybody else having that problem? Antibiotics. Yeah. I don't know. Is anybody else having that problem? And yes, Matt, it is the usual call-in number. I don't think I said that already. Anyway, uh, let's scale of time, is it? I think we're okay time-wise. Everything's fine here. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and get a word from our sponsor, which, of course, is you. This is Troubled Minds News. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Are you digging the show? If so, you can support us quite easily and at no additional cost to you if you already have an Amazon Prime account. Since we stream on Twitch every day, all you have to do is link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and they give you free games on a monthly basis for your personal use, and also a bonus $5 a month to send to your favorite streamer as a way to bring more people to Twitch. And all you have to do is sync up to two accounts and click subscribe. Thanks for considering us. Okay, back to it. What's going on? Troubled Minds News. I'm Michael Strange. Let's keep on rolling, shall we? This is from CNET. And uh, yeah, wouldn't you know it? More weird shit on Mars. NASA rover spots surreal spikes on Mars. Oh, <laughs> if Dr. Seuss sculpted Mars, it would look like this. Oh, okay. NASA's Curiosity rover has a knack for snapping eye-opening pictures of the Gale Crater on Mars. There was the very, actually very small, they say, doorway recently, and then a face-like cliff last year. The latest, wow, look at that image, has come, and it's come to my attention. It shows two delicate, gravity-defying formations reaching upward from the dusty Martian surface. The SETI Institute, a research organization focused on searching for life in the universe, highlighted the image in a tweet last week, calling it a cool rock. Oh, sweet. A cool rock. Look at that photograph. That's pretty, pretty nuts, huh? Uh, I don't know. This is a uh <laughs> uh, SETI offered a possible explanation for the fantastical shapes. Quote, the spikes are most likely the cemented fillings of ancient fractures in a sedimentary rock. The rest of the rock was made of softer material and was eroded away. Oh, all right. That's fine, I guess. That's totally fine. Uh, what else do we got? The image came from Curiosity's mass-mounted camera, mast cam, on May 15th. It can be hard to judge the scale of rocks and other small landscape features, but a wider view suggests the formations are very dainty. The spikes are reminiscent of a lovely flower or coral-shaped Concretion? Concretion? How the hell do you say that? Leftover from erosion of sedimentary rock the rover spotted earlier this year. Anyway, there you go. There's your uh, there's your little uh, wild formations that um, the rock eroded around. And, mm, yeah, sure. I guess that's fine. I mean, you know, 
I don't think we have rocks like that on Earth anywhere close to it, but what what the hell do I know? I'm just a knucklehead with a microphone on the Internet. 702-957-1037, Trouble Minds News. I'm Michael Strange. Let's go to Matt in Colorado. What's up, bro? This guy is so into this stuff. What's up, Matt? How are you, man? What's going on? Happy Friday. Man, I'm, I'm doing good. Um, you know, I... Uh I have a little bit of knowledge in the everything and not very much knowledge depth wise into anything. You know, I just got thoughts. I got ideas. Uh, I don't know too much about much, but a little bit about something, you know? Perfect for me. Go right ahead. What are your thoughts, my man, on any of this stuff or happy Friday? What's going on? Yeah, well, the first thing, you know how I like to start off is a little bit light, but, you know, you mentioned the the Mayan gal uh, eating the tamales, and uh, I, I went down to Nicaragua quite a number of times, and I have had fresh tamales that were made from fresh corn, and oh my God, there's nothing better you could eat. And they, the vendors would go by on the street, and they would, you know, it was like, with the exchange rate, it was like uh, two or three tamales for like a dollar, and oh my God, they were delicious. And then I, I'd tell people about going down to Nicaragua or whatever, and they're like, oh, why were you down there? And I was like, well, you know, it was sort of, uh, I went down there for, you know, taking guns down and, and drugs <laughs> Stop it. You know, Stop guns, it. Guns down, drugs back. Right? You know, just smuggling uh, people. But, uh, Normal weekend in Nicaragua. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, man. Come on. Yeah. No, but no, of course that's a joke. And, and, uh, no, I, I was on humanitarian missions working on world hunger issues and supporting towns and getting fresh water and, and building schools and things that that's what I was doing down in Nicaragua. But, uh, number two, the James Webb, you mentioned that and, uh, and, uh, uh, the hellish planet. And, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, the James Webb Telescope, one of its like four primary missions is to study the, I think it's about 1,400 different what they call Goldilocks planets, which means Earth-like planets, that they've already identified. And so the James Webb, one of its missions is to go take a closer look at those, study if there's, you know, carbon emissions or things like that and any sorts of, um, you know, um, regular life forms slash maybe perhaps intelligent life forms. And, you know, this is, uh, I'm just saying about that. This is the first of is of what is going to be a lot of discoveries and news stories they're going to have about the different planets they've discovered. And, hey, who knows what's next? You know, maybe they're getting to the list of the 1,400. They proceed through those, and, and we discover something pretty interesting. Right. So yeah. Hell yeah. That's pretty uh, cool. I'm looking forward to. Uh, so actually, middle of July, they're saying is the first real images we're going to get from the James Webb Telescope. So I'm um, I'm looking forward to it. Maybe they can find some uh, some aliens out there. Some alien damn aliens out there. Uh, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, yeah. Great stuff. Uh, go ahead. Uh, great stuff as always. We got to go because this is a shorter format. We can't go long calls. But uh, uh, final thought, my friend. Yeah, well, you mentioned uh, correlation causation with the uh, protein and the, the depression and uh, the, the the prolines and whatever. And I, I just want to say, you know, uh, somebody once said about that, 98% of people um, that have heart attacks have um, instant coffee makers, you know, automatic coffee makers in their house. And so basically drinking coffee and automatic coffee makers cause heart attacks right so that's that's a great analogy about you know correlation versus causation and and like you said uh there was a whole lot of other things that were going on with these people with the produce so that doesn't make it true yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Like, like they said a while back that uh, uh, Viagra would also uh, keep uh, Alzheimer's away or something, something to that effect, <laughs> which seemed, it seemed a little ridiculous, the old correlation causation thing. But hey, why not? Uh, you know, let's just keep just popping, popping the, the, the pills and, uh, yeah, uh, stabbing people while we're in line at the uh, post office. Uh, you're the best. Matt, I appreciate the call. Always a pleasure. Have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for the call, my friend. You too, my man.
Bye. Thanks a lot. There you go. That's Matt in Colorado doing our thing, talking about the news. Troubled Minds News, 702-957-1037. Let's go to, it looks like, uh, is this Chantel in Ohio? Test, test, one, two. Uh, hey, what's going on, Michael? It's Ken Jira. Ken Jira. I'd get that wrong. What's up? How are you? Welcome to Troubled Minds. What's up? Oh, yeah. Mind? Yeah, I, I told you I'd call you back. So, uh, yeah, I was just listening to you talk about the monkeypox stuff. I was just, I'm waiting for the T virus outbreak and the zombie apocalypse. Honestly, that, that's 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 the, my my quick point I wanted to get to. With all the crazy shit going on with all the medical stuff, it's one thing after another: killer bees, monkeypox, COVID. What's next? The progenitor virus? I think the umbrella company's got to be real. <laughs> yeah, it sure seems like it, doesn't it? Uh, th- th- it's one thing after another. Right. I'm I'm hoping this monkeypox doesn't become something. They, like it's it, you know, I've been keeping my eye on it. And it's like, oh, there's 12 cases, there's 40 cases, there's 80 cases, there's 800 cases. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, here we go again. Well, right? I think it's kind of funny that the government ordered what 13 million units of vaccines for the monkeypox, like way ahead of schedule. So they're up to something. Uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hope not. I hope that's not the case uh, because uh, we don't we don't need another batch of that crap. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. What else you got, my friend? Oh uh, well, I just want, quickly. I know it's a shorter show, but you ever heard of a book called the Urantia Book or the Urantia Society? I wondered if you ever heard of that, or if you'd ever talked about it or touched on it on your show, or if you'd ever look into it. Yeah, it's a real interesting thing. It's about. Go ahead, go ahead. I've heard of it, but not don't yeah. know much about yeah. it. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, yeah. I think it's about like aliens and stuff. And I, I didn't know. It's just something I was reading on. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if Michael's ever talked about this. But I just wanted to, you know, tell you about it. So, but I won't keep you too long, man. Thanks for what you do, and we'll, we'll talk to you next time. Appreciate the call. Thanks a lot. That's uh, that's Kenji, and uh, that's on Twitch. There you go. Easy as that. 702-957-1037. Thank you for the phone call. And uh, thank you, Matt and Kenji. And uh, it said Ohio, so I thought uh, that was uh, Chantel, but uh, apparently it was not. Uh, what's going on, guys? Hope everybody's well. Happy Friday. Doing the news. I'm Michael Strange. This is Troubled Minds News. Let's keep on trucking. Let's do a few more and take another quick break here. And thanks for the great calls, guys. Let's go to, uh, yeah, the Wall Street Journal, Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, I always keep a full pot of coffee. I got a whole pitcher plus a pot in the fridge I, I, don't, I don't mess around if i if i don't have my coffee i'm a sob i can be i can be a really cranky dude uh yeah without coffee in any case let's go to uh let's go to this um alex jones's Infowars ends bankruptcy after sandy hook family's exit uh-oh what does that mean to resume resume defamation litigation against mr jones the families agreed last month to drop legal claims against Infowars properties in chapter 11 uh that's a pretty surreal looking photograph of alex jones he looks like a cartoon character it's a very nice nicely photoshopped uh anyway weird uh yeah okay so infowars is jettisoning its bankruptcy case after families of sandy hook school is shooting victim uh, the school shooting victims who were suing the uh that we drew from the chapter 11 process anyway blah 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 thought it was interesting that this was happening not really much to report it's not my problem thank goodness for that and this is why uh you should not say that kids that have died have not actually died please don't do that uh like i said uh it's a dangerous line of thinking in my opinion and this is this is the crazy crazy part right me being a quote conspiracy theorist okay uh conspiracy realist maybe uh let's say fringe analyst shout out to 40s uh, and 40s out there thanks for uh putting the uh uh the thing in the, the this show in the events section on discord uh there you go you get notifications uh, uh 40s has been helping me out to uh, put uh you know the times and stuff in in the discord on when the shows are so that everybody's clear on what's happening but then he also is uh, now going to be putting in if if he's got the time of course uh the events so uh, it pops up on Discord. We'll give you a notification about the, uh, yeah, about the uh, the when the shows come and go and whatnot. So thank you, Forties, for that. If you're out there listening, and uh, there we go. Let's keep on trucking, shall we? Let's uh, let's go to space, space.com. Mm, space. Love me some space. All right, here we go. Yep. Pew pew. Perseverance rover on Mars picks its own prize rocks to shoot with laser. Huh. 
Okay. Yeah, lovely. NASA is hailing the Perseverance rover's improved ability to pick its own targets as a way of speeding up science on Mars. Without explicit direction from Earth, the Perseverance rover zapped two rock targets with its SuperCam instrument on Sol 442, that would be May 18th, to learn more about their elemental compositions. Mission scientists said in an update Tuesday about the Mars mission, quote, Normally, when the rover team picks the targets, the observations are not made until the following day. Roger Weens, principal in- investigator uh, of SuperCam and a planetary scientist at Los Alamos National Lab, said in a statement. He continued, if Perseverance picks its own targets, it can shoot them right after a drive. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Having this quote, having the SuperCam results right away can alert the team to unusual compositions in time to make decisions about further analysis analyses before the rover moves on weens added perseverance's software for target selection is called autonomous exploration for gathering increased science aegis which was developed at nasa's jet propulsion laboratory in california for other rover missions ween said the software was then adapted for perseverance as a super cam instrument anyway uh, interesting stuff good 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 uh mars yeah uh, i think space is real sorry sorry to disappoint so many of you 702-957-1037 click the discord link troubledminds.org just to get a quick break and a word from our sponsor which of course is you don't go anywhere be right back with more troubled minds news and michael strange Welcome back to Troubled Minds News. All right, let's do it. What's up, guys? Uh, 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 see, I can be a knucklehead, too. Uh, well, I mean, mostly a knucklehead. I can be a not a knucklehead. I'll, I'll prove that one of these days. You'll see. Check this out. This is pretty cool. This is from Universe Today. A pulsar has been found turning so slowly, astronomers didn't even think it was possible. Once every 76 seconds uh oh uh ba 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 neutron stars are the extremely dense remnants of massive stars that have undergone gravitational collapse and shed their outer layers in a supernova these stars often have very fast spins and their powerful magnetic fields cause them to emit tight beams of radiation that sweep across the galaxy hence the term magnetar astronomers are currently aware of about 3000 pulsars in the milky way galaxy and the timing of their pulses is used as a sort of astronomical beacon or cosmic lighthouse that's pretty sweet now, in all previous cases magnetars have been observed to have a rapid rotational periods but in this case the team observed what appeared to be an ultra long period magnetar a theoretical class of neutron stars with extremely strong magnetic fields the source was initially detected thanks to a single pulse observed by the mirror trap instrument piggybacking on observations led by the hunt for dynamic and explosive radio transients with meerkat or the thundercat team thundercats ho right anyway sorry i had to do it the two then conducted follow-up observations together that confirmed the position of the source and the timing of the pulses as dr manisha caleb a former postdoctoral researcher from the university of manchester and a current astrophysical researcher at the university of sydney said quote Amazingly, we only detect radio emission from this source for 0.5% of its rotation period. This means that it is very fortuitous that the radio beam intersected with the Earth. It is therefore likely that there are many more of these very slowly spinning sources in the galaxy, which has important implications for how neutron stars are born and age. Yeah, there you go. There you go. 702-957-1037. You're the nerd, APOC. All right, here we go. What's up? Let's uh, keep on trucking. There's always more. Uh, Cheryl Sandberg. Uh, you guys remember her? Yeah, from uh, Facebook fame or infamy, I guess it would be. Cheryl Sandberg was under investigation at Meta for using corporate resources to plan her wedding, report says. Now, look, what the hell is wrong with these people? Are you shitting me? Like, these people are in these the highest levels of these these spots right where where in these companies they're they're so entrenched and they're paid ridiculous money and they're still doing shit like this are you kidding me 
that's ridiculous. It's just like, come on, man. I had this guy I used to work with at this big box retail store. Dude made a grip of money, like like almost two hundred grand a year, right? Like, and we're not talking Sheryl Sandberg money, but that's that's quite a bit of money, right? That's a nice salary, right? And this this moron was like stealing. It's like, what what the fuck is wrong with people? Like, hey, come on now, a little bit of one owner writer action going on. I mean, come on now. Look, if, if you if you have the money, just buy the damn things. Come on, people. Ugh. Anyway, uh, yep. So Meta's Cheryl Sandberg was under investigation for using corporate resources to plan her wedding. Sandberg announced Wednesday she would be stepping down as head of operations at Meta, Facebook's parent company, after 14 years. She said she will remain, remain on the company's board of directors. Quote, I am not entirely sure what the future will bring. I have learned no one ever is... Wait, I have learned no one ever is. What? <laughs> what the f- They're not even human. They're not even human. And I come on, I'm only joking when I say that. But what that's not even a real quote. Come on, really? That looks like it's like it was written by AI. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, all right, shut up. Let's, let's I'm going to move on or I'm going to get super mad. Uh, she needed, hey, she needed the money. What's up, Bernays Sauce? Uh, yeah, uh, let's go to the Daily Beast. If we're talking about the Daily Beast, well, usually it's pr- propaganda trash, but this is cool. Roving packs of robot dogs are coming to the moon. Yeah, now we're, now we're in business. Let's do this. Let's do this. It's the year 2035. You wake up and press a button that opens up the blinds for your bedroom window, revealing a spectacular view of Earth. It's another morning on the moon as you start your day in one of the human colonies on the lunar surface. As you get out of bed, though, you hear it. The familiar whirring sounds of actuators at the tip and the tip tap of feet as your robot dog makes its way towards you. Your pet, you pet the pooch before you get started on another day of exploring the moon. Yep. Well, researchers at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich and the University of Zurich and the Research Center for Information Technology in Kars- Karlsruhe, Germany, both entered robot dog designs in the ESA's Lunar Polar Challenge, a competition for European and Canadian engineering teams to develop moon rovers capable of scouting and prospecting valuable resources such as ice in harsh and inhospitable areas of the moon like the South Lunar Pole. Mm. Five out of 13 initial teams succeeded in the first challenge of navigating and mapping a simulated lunar environment, allowing them to proceed to the next phase of the competition. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Robot dogs on the moon. I'm into it. I'm into it. Yep. <laughs> there you go. My hydro hose. What's up? My pooch has a top speed of 70. Exactly. <laughs> hey, I watched a couple of Rick and Morty's. You're right. That shit's wild. <laughs> what the fuck with that show? I was on the other night and I was like, yeah, all right. Uh, Joseph says this is cool. Let me watch. It's like, what in the world? The guy had like uh, had some sort of competition where he won and had to give away his penis to some other guy. And uh, it was all fucked up. I was like, what in the world is going on? Uh, anyway, uh, sci-fi.com. Let's, let's Let's keep on trucking. What's up, Ronald? <laughs> my, my robot dog keeps licking his floppy disk. Damn it, it's Ronald. All right, uh, sci-fi.com. Are super, supermassive black holes killing their host galaxies? Now, this is an interesting thing because uh, we've sort of speculated this before just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. In that uh, we have this uh, this moment of, uh, well, okay, so if the supermassive black hole at the center is can, uh, keeping the galaxy intact, uh, gravitationally speaking, right? But then also it's eating stuff in the middle uh is it gonna just eventually you know given billions of years down the road eat everything in the galaxy is it all destined to just be eaten by a black hole well the answer is maybe (laughs) a new study using archived astronomical observations across the electromagnetic spectrum has come to a rather startling and somewhat unsettling conclusion supermassive black holes in the centers of many galaxies may have suppressed star formation early on after those galaxies formed effectively killing them in very general terms when we look around the nearby universe today we see two types of galaxies ones that are still making stars like the milky way and ones that don't many of these galaxies are ellipticals cotton 
ball like galaxies that have lots of stars but virtually no gas and dust, the raw fuel to make stars. And in fact, the stars in these galaxies are very old, indicating the galaxies made stars early on but then stopped for some reason. Yeah, well, uh, as, as we can tell, uh, what's really going on here, nobody really knows. Uh, we got some theories, though. We got theories, and that's okay. I mean, hey, we got theories. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link. Remains to be seen if any of that stuff is true, because what the hell do we know? Uh, let's do some... We never do some news on the Royals. So, uh, hey, we'll never be Royals. It's just not in our blood. Know what I'm saying? Uh, yep. Uh, this is from the New York Post. Yeah. Harry and Meghan met with loud boos in first Royal event... In two years. Oh, that's a shame. What will they ever do? Yeah. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were loudly booed Friday while returning it together to, to royal events in the UK for the first time in two years. Remember, they uh, they famously uh, exited the royal family. The Rexit. <laughs> R-E-K-X-I-T. Rexit. <laughs> Rex, Rexit. Anyway, uh, a small cheer initially greeted the exiled royal couple's exit from St. Paul's Cathedral just to be quickly drowned out by a chorus of shouted boos video shows. Similar booing broke out when the couple arrived for the national service of Thanksgiving, their first public royal event together since officially quitting royal life two years ago. It's uh, a good thing. I don't give a shit. All right, let's keep on trucking. ScienceAlert.com. Uh, yeah, the royals. Here, there you go. There you go. These assholes. Anyway, uh, this is uh, this is wild. I don't even know what this means, but it's pretty cool. Um, physicists have uh, this. Uh, t- sorry, two time crystals have been successfully linked together for the first time. Uh oh. Uh oh. We got uh, some Doctor Who action going on, which I've never seen, by the way. But I did finally learn what a TARDIS is, and I used to think it was an insult, but uh, apparently it's not. Anyway, two time crystals successfully linked for the first time. Physicists have just taken an amazing step towards quantum devices that sound like something out of science fiction. For the first time, isolated groups of particles behaving like bizarre states of matter known as time crystals have been linked into a single evolving system that could be incredibly useful in quantum computing. Following the first observation of the interaction between the two time crystals detailed in a paper two years ago, this is the next step towards potentially harnessing time crystals for practical purposes, such as quantum information processing. Time crystals, only officially discovered and confirmed a few years ago in 2016, were once thought to be physically impossible. They are a phase of matter very similar to normal crystals, but for one addition, peculiar and very special property. One additional property, sorry. In regular crystals, the atoms are arranged in a fixed three-dimensional grid structure like the atomic lattice of a diamond or quartz crystal. These repeating lattices can differ in configuration, but any movement they exhibit comes exclusively from external pushes. In time crystals, the atoms behave a bit differently. They exhibit patterns of movement in time that can't be so easily explained by an external push or shove. These oscillations, referred to as ticking, are locked to a regular and particular frequency. Theoretically, time crystals tick at their lowest possible energy state, known as the ground state, and are therefore stable and coherent over long periods of time. So when the structure of regular crystals repeats in space, in time crystals it repeats space in space and time, thus exhibiting perpetual ground state motion. Okay, I don't know what the hell any of that shit means, but uh, there you go. Ronald's got it right. The beginnings of the first flux capacitor, probably. What's up, Rohan? I got your lattice right here. (laughs) Damn it, that joke never gets old, does it? 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link, troubledminds.org. What's up, guys? Hope everybody's well. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Let's do this. Uh, This is from Venn. Venture Beat. Headline is Devo Technology announces 100 million in funding to ve- to develop autonomous S. O C. Uh, yep, and this is uh, we're talking about uh, uh, b- 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 cybersecurity. Here we go. Uh, the Devo platform provides enterprises with a cloud-native logging and security analytics solution that integrates with a set of purpose-built applications for security, 
IT operations and machine learning use cases alongside the organization's community application marketplace, Devo Exchange. For enterprises, the solution has the potential to provide visibility over risks in the cloud and on-premise environments so they can get an understanding of exposure in real time in com- uh, co- complex hybrid cloud environments. Okay, so basically this is just cybersecurity stuff, but what they're going to do is they're uh, locking in uh, like an autonomous sort of network administrator that's going to uh, in real time monitor attacks and be able to thwart them somehow, stop them somehow, I don't know. In any case, uh, we'll see. Uh, this is fine, just the, uh, you know, the first step of the the uh, the, the, the Skynet takeover of the, the universe, so that's this is fine. I'm okay with this. Whatever, I just thought it was an interesting little tidbit and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, that's, it's time splitters time. Uh, <laughs> damn it, Rohan. Damn it, Rohan. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Friday. Uh, let's go to this. Let's go to Big Think. And yeah, now we're talking. How the multiverse could break the scientific method. Yeah. Uh, Brene Sauce got bad audio. I got your bad audio right here, buddy. Right here. Uh, audio's pretty good. Sounds good. Look, let me tap the mic. Should be fine. Uh, today, let's uh, blah, blah, blah. How far can we push the theories of physics? All right. The controversy started in the 1980s. Two physicists, Andre Lind at Stanford University and Alex Vilkin at Tufts University, independently proposed that if the universe underwent a very fast expansion early on in its existence, we call this an inflationary expansion, that our universe would not be the only one. The inflationary phase of growth presumably happened a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of, a trillionth of one second after the beginning of time. That was about 10 to the 36 seconds after the bang when the clock that describes the expansion of our universe started ticking. Is that 10 to the negative 36? Is that even a thing? I don't even know. Anyway, uh, math, uh, no, 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 not anymore. Maybe when I was a young man, math these days may as well be voodoo if you ask me in any case you may ask how come these scientists feel comfortable talking about times so ridiculously small wasn't the universe also ridiculously dense at those times well the truth is we do not yet have a theory that describes physics under these conditions what we do have are extrapolations based on what we know today okay blah 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 quantum fields multiverse testable i don't know it's fun to think about it's fun to talk about i beat that multiverse's ass on troubled minds radio many of you guys know and that's totally okay because why not right somebody has to hey if nobody's given the multiverse love the multiverse doesn't get any love and that's just the way i see it and sometimes the multiverse can be lonely I keep reading. You want me to read it? All right. It's a super long and super winding road. It's like hundreds of words here. I mean, all right. Here we go. Let's read some more of this. All right. Let's see. As, as requested. Is the multiverse testable? This is wildly inspiring. But is it science? To be scientific, a hypothesis needs to be testable. Can you test the multiverse? The answer, in a strict sense, is no. Each of these inflating regions or contracting ones, as there could also be failed universes, is outside our cosmic horizon, the region that delimits how far light has traveled since the beginning of time. As such, we cannot see these cosmoids nor receive any signals from them. The best that we can hope for is to find a sign that one of our neighboring universes bruised our own space in the past. If this had happened, we would see some specific patterns in the sky, more precisely in the radiation left over after the hydrogen atoms formed some 400,000 years after the Big Bang. So far, no such signal has been found. The chances of finding one are, quite frankly, remote. There you go. A little bit of reading that. Uh, Links are in the description. Check them out. And uh, (laughs) let's keep on trucking. 702-957-1037. This is Trouble Minds News. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More after the break. Be right back. Oops, that's the wrong button. Let's do that one. Are you digging the show? If so, you can support us quite easily and at no additional cost to you if you already have an Amazon Prime account. Since we stream on Twitch every day, all you have to do is link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and they give you free games on a monthly basis for your personal use, and also a bonus $5 a month to send to your favorite streamer as a way to bring more people to Twitch. And all you have to do is sync up to two accounts and click subscribe. Thanks for considering us. 
Hey, what's up, Vicky? Happy Friday. I see you there. What's up, Vicky? She popped into the uh, to the, the voice chat last night, and I was being particularly obnoxious and vulgar, so I apologize to Vicky for that. <laughs> Let's go to Reuters.com. Uh, Vicky knows me well enough to be like, ah, that's just Mike. He's just being stupid. And, well, it happens from time to time. Uh, exclusive. Elon Musk wants to cut 10% of Tesla jobs. Oh, get wrecked. Uh, June 3rd. Yep. Uh, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has a super bad feeling about the economy and needs to cut about 10% of salaried staff at the electric car maker. He said an email seen by Reuters. No, you're, you're, you're right on time, Vicky. Well, kind of. We're almost done. 10 minutes or so. Uh, a message to the executives on Thursday laid out his concerns and told them to pause all hiring worldwide. Uh Uh-oh. The dire outlook came two days after the billionaire told staff to return to the workplace or leave and adds to a growing chorus of warnings from business leaders about the risks of a recession. Oh. Tesla shares fell 9% in U.S. trade on Friday after the Reuters report. The tech-heavy Nasdaq was down about 2%. In another email to employees on Friday, Musk said Tesla will be reducing salaried headcount by 10% as it has become overstaffed in many areas. But hourly headcount will increase, he said. Note, this does not apply to anyone actually building cars, battery packs, or installing solar, Musk wrote in the email seen by Reuters. Almost 100,000 people were employed at Tesla and its subsidiaries at the end of 2021. This annual SEC filing showed it did not break down numbers of salaried and hourly workers. All right, 100,000 people employed, and they're going to lay off 10,000 of them? Mm, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Uh, 702-957-1037. Let's uh, keep on trucking, shall we? There's always more news to talk about. Let's uh, go to, yep, Yahoo still exists. Yahoo still exists. Uh, here we go. All right, here we got. Uh, yep, U.S. Navy aircraft carrier to be broken down for one cent arrives at scrapyard after 16,000 mile final voyage. One cent? What? What the hell? What? Really? Uh, Anyway, the U.S. Navy's last commissioned conventionally powered aircraft carrier, the former USS Kitty Hawk, finished its final voyage on Tuesday when it arrived at a scrapyard in Brownsville, Texas, local media reported. Uh, The Battle Cat. Ho! Started its 16,000 mile journey to the scrapyard in January at Naval Base Kitsap in Bremerton, Washington. In the months that followed, the aircraft carrier, which at over 280 feet wide and more than 1,000 feet long, is too large to go through the Panama Canal, was towed around South America and through the Strait of Magellan to Texas, where, where many people, including former service members, gathered to watch as it arrived this week. Uh, the Kitty Hawk was decommissioned in 2009 after almost 50 years of naval service, which in Included the testing of new military capabilities, combat operations, race riots, what? And even a collision with a rival powers submarine. Wait, what? Okay. Anyway, the it says it right there. Race riots? Wait, what? Okay. The testing of whatever the first in-class ship is is the, the last of the navy's conventional carriers which the navy replaced with a nuclear powered nimitz and ford class carriers to be decommissioned anyway blah 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 it's the one for one penny for one cent broken down for one cent all right and notice they don't even reference it in the damn order and whatever i don't care i look you know what yahoo uh, go go uh go die in a grease fire yahoo get out of here nobody likes you anyway nobody liked you back when you're the only thing on the on the internet all right there we go sorry that was not a nice thing for me to say it's an old poker term by the way when you when you got owned in poker they would tell you terrible things like die in a grease fire stuff like that it's not a nice thing to say or think anyway uh back to this let's go to uh cnbc.com crypto firms say thousands of digital currencies will collapse compare market to early dot-com days Uh uh-oh uh-oh we got a problem don't we we might have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Several cryptocurrency industry players have told CNBC that thousands of digital tokens are likely to collapse, while the number of blockchains in existence will also fall over will, will fall over the coming years. Uh, the more than 19,000 cryptocurrencies in existence and dozens of blockchain platforms that exist, 19,000 of them. A blockchain platform such as Ethereum is the underlying technology that many of these different cryptocurrencies are built upon. Hey, hey, 
Lay down, dog. Lay down. The recent collapse of so-called algorithmic stablecoin Terra USD and its associated digital token Luna, speaking of Luna, hey, lay down, uh, which sent shockwaves through the market, has thrust a spotlight on the thousands of cryptocurrencies in existence and whether they will all survive. Quote, one of the effects that we've seen last week with the Terra issue is we're at the stage where basically there are far too many blockchains out there, too many tokens, and that's confusing users. And that's also bringing some risks for the users. Bertrand Perez, CEO of the Web3 Foundation, told CNBC at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Oh, these fucking guys. These guys always show up, don't they? The World Economic Forum. Whatever. Get out of here, bro. I'm kind of tired of these guys. You will own nothing and you will be happy and i will be sick of their shit that's for sure what's going on guys ktnv las vegas uh speaking of monkeypox and uh your your um, meat sticks of choice uh ktnv.com in las vegas reports this ah uh, yes indeed investigation pool water at two popular vegas day clubs contains e coli and high levels of bacteria bacteria no voice, Mike. No voice. Hey, the voice is fine. It's Twitch. Twitch. You know what? For a, tr- a streaming platform, I got to be real. Twitch fucking sucks. It co- it's constantly dropping for people. It's, it's Anyway, it just got problem after problem after. I mean, they, they've got one job. Stream stably, right? One job. Come on now. Anyway, uh, so uh, monkeypox going around. I, this is fine, right? Let's just everybody jump in public pools. Uh, I mean, I was looking at the picture here, and I was like, eh, you know, this looks like a sausage fest. There's a lot of dudes in that pool. And, uh, you know, even if you filled that with, like, lovely young ladies, I'm still not going anywhere near that pool. I'm sorry. <laughs> not happening. Not happening. No. Uh, public pools give me the heebie-jeebies. Not doing it. An investigation into popular pool clubs on the Las Vegas Strip revealed the presence of bacteria and even E. coli. Oh, you, really? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. There you go. Inside Edition sent a team of producers to collect samples at three of the most popular day clubs on the Strip. Marquee Day Club at the Cosmopolitan, Daylight Beach Club at Mandalay Bay, and Tau Beach Day Club at the Venetian. The pool water samples were sent to the IEH laboratories in Seattle for testing, and the results were reviewed by Dr. Season Whittier, a clinical microbiologist at Columbia University. Quote, we found a lot of fecal bacteria in some of these pools. Come on, guys. Take a shower before you go get in the public pool. That's disgusting. Uh, Quote, the potential for infection occurring seems inevitable. Oh, this should be fine. The Southern Nevada Health District requires these day clubs to keep pool filtration systems in continuous operation and to keep pools clean of debris, slime, and biofilm. Yeah, that seems totally possible without draining it every single day. Uh, but in the pool at Marquee Day Club, Inside Edition producers found fingernails, cigarette butts, and foamy debris. Huh. Does that make you want to vomit? Yeah, me too. 702-957-1037. Stay out of public pools, guys. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, tears. All right. Let's go to this. Uh, just in case you you guys were in the, um, the market for a... Uh, speaking of creepy, yeah, biofilm, uh, <laughs> creepy. Uh, yeah, Jeffrey Epstein's islands are for sale, guys. In case anybody's on the market for a private island where they used to do weird ritual pedo shit. But, uh, yeah, first asking $125 million, Jeffrey Epstein's Caribbean Islands now available for only $55 million each. Ah, this is from the Wall Street Journal. And, you know, of course, this is just, you know, for people that are like, you know, into weird shit, I guess. Uh, super weird shit. And uh, no, I'm not going anywhere near this island. It's probably cursed. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's estate is cutting the price of two private Caribbean islands that were owned by the late disgraced financier, according to one of the listing agents. Notice, that once again, they never call this guy a pedo. They call him a disgraced financier, right? And this is what I'm saying. Like, this is how you can tell right they're they're willing to just instantly call i don't know a republican legislator a nazi right like instantly right instantly and i'm not defending the republicans by the way they're assholes too but i'm just saying just by their political party they're nazis clearly and obviously right but oh let's take jeffrey epstein and we'll just call him a disgraced financier yeah 
fuck off. He's a pedo. Get out of here. The islands known as Great St. James and Little St. James were first listed as a pair for $125 million in March. They will now be available separately for $55 million apiece. Discount, discount, discount on haunted islands. There you go. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, no, that's fine. I mean, it's not fine. Fine, not fine. Gross. Uh, here we go. Haunted as fuck. Uh, let's do this. Let's go to the New York Post, and then we'll wrap this up. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Friday. Happy, happy Friday. Friday. Uh, I need to do some cartoon voices and make my own cartoons because uh, the voices are fun. What's up, guys? The first thing you see in this optical illusion could reveal your dream job. Mm, interesting. Yeah, okay. Well, let's look at this image and see what you guys see. What do you see? Let's see what you see. It looks like, uh, yeah, what's your first thought? What do you see? I see definitely a skull. I see a snail. It says you should be able to spot a snail, map, and skull in the optical illusion. Here you go. The image that you first see in this mind-boggling brain teaser reveals your dream job. Viewers should be able to spot a snail, map, and skull in the optical illusion. Those that notice the snail first are reportedly set to thrive in jobs while, uh, where workers use their voice. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, your dream job could be a teacher, bus driver, or social worker, according to experts at Your Tango. This is because the roles involve a lot of interaction with people, either students, customers, or residents. Meanwhile, viewers had instantly spotted the skull are thought to be more creative. You may want to become an artist, painter, or dancer. Those that can see the map love problem solving and have an analytical mind. You may decide to pursue a career in architecture, law, science, or engineering. Meanwhile, one of Oleg Shupiliak's paintings features a man, mermaid, bird, and a sea. Anyway, do you, do you believe this psycho babble bullshit? <laughs> I kind of don't. Uh, I don't. I. You know what? When they're like, it's like the ink blot test. It's like, do you see a demon? Do you see Cthulhu? I knew what you're insane. Get the fuck out of here. No, I don't believe any of this crap, but I don't believe much, to be perfectly honest. But I do enjoy the thought that maybe this stuff is real. I don't know. Is this really like trying to say something about your dream job? Get out of here, bro. Get out of here. Uh, but, but experts, remember experts, experts at your tango, whatever the f that is, uh, experts. All right. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me, does this stuff even work? I, I'm skeptical, let's say. I'm highly skeptical about a lot of things. Uh, you know, uh, keep an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out. And that's that. That's that. And uh, there you go. What's up? Rohan says, uh, I've done some at uni and I don't buy it. Give me some empirical evidence. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this It just seems like psychobabble bullshit to me. And uh, there we go. So uh, happy Friday to all the fine folks out there. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the calls uh, today to, uh, uh, I can't remember, <laughs> Kenji and, uh, and uh, Matt, I think is who it was. And uh, look, I mean, look, come on, come on, come on. It's the weekend. It's June. It's hard to hate it, right? And I hope uh, and all the, the cold weather is shaking out everywhere and everybody's having a nice time out there. Uh, have a fantastic weekend. Tonight, don't forget, we will be, I will be on uh, the Ryan Gable show. I'm going to test with him in Discord in just a moment uh, after he gets home in just a little bit. And uh, we'll, uh, tonight, we'll be on with Ryan Gable at 11 p.m. Pacific time on the Fringe FM. It's exclusive on Fringe. He doesn't actually, uh, Rohan's actually over on Discord. That's why. He doesn't actually uh, stream to, um, to uh, anywhere, Facebook or YouTube or anything else. So it will be exclusively on the Fringe FM. And uh, we'll be on, uh, I think, we'll, we'll, we're still working out the logistics of what, but it'll be me, Ryan Gable of The Secret Teachings. It will be Joe Roop of Lighting the Void and Jess Rogie of Escape the Simulation. All of Fringe hosts, all fantastic people. And uh, come say hi. And I think we'll be taking calls. And basically, Ryan Gable is leaving the Fringe Network. He got uh, basically promoted, right? He got uh, taken over to uh, to the Clyde Lewis Network, if you guys know Clyde Lewis of uh, Ground Zero fame. And uh, it's a good thing. It's it's one of those good spots for, um, for, for Ryan. It's a uh, it's a step up for him. Clyde Lewis is a nationally syndicated radio host. He's very good at what he does. And Ryan will be on the Ground Zero radio network right after 
Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero. So uh, uh, that's uh, many congratulations are in order to Ryan Gable because that's one of those spots you just you can't pass that up. You get offered that, you got to go. And so so he will be leaving Fringe tonight is his last Fringe show. So we're going to have kind of a going away and uh, a a, a uh, brouhaha. Ryan said he'd like to go three hours if possible. So we'll stay up late into the night, yucking it up doing the thing so we'll see you there and uh there you go let's smash the button and get the fuck out of here uh so we'll see you there I'll, I'll have the link for you guys tonight if you want to uh like i said i know many of you listen on youtube and twitch and whatnot so you're like what the, what the fuck where do i even find fringe i'll have a link for you tonight so you guys can listen we'll be doing call-ins and uh if you've never talked to ryan gable it might be a good a good spot to uh give ryan a call and uh tell him congratulations like uh uh over there on uh, what's up rohan says that's great news for ryan i am pleased for him and there you go that's that should be the notion i think uh and uh as much as i want to be an asshole and uh i'm not going to be an asshole because uh, congratulations are in order for ryan gable and I'm, uh, I'm i'm looking forward to him uh succeeding and doing the thing so uh there you go uh, i'll have that link i'll put it in discord and also on social media on uh, twitter a little bit later tonight but it will be 11 p.m pacific time on the fringe fm and uh go for two maybe three hours uh taking phone calls etc so there you go for talky talky radio hosts it shouldn't be a mess at all uh so uh if you want to help the show a number of ways sub up on twitch right here you can sub up on patreon you can sub up on rockfin you can uh, go to troubled minds uh, the troubled fans.com the store troubled fans for, buy sweet hats like this and nice shirts and whatnot and uh there you go if you want to help the show and uh you don't want to spend money spread the word listen to the podcast feed on spotify or iTunes and that's as simple as that easy peasy thanks for being here thanks for spending your time and energy have a fantastic weekend guys we'll see you a little bit later tonight and with that I bid you adieu have a great one Michael Strange out